Hello and uh, welcome to my channel. It is a pleasure to have you today. Right, today I want to talk to you about wiring in your all-in-one solar charge controller, inverter, it's one unit, it's beautiful. So if you haven't bought one already or you're thinking about buying one, I want to just give you the rundown of wiring them in. So what I'm going to do is include the consumer unit as well because I don't really recommend wiring these in without a consumer unit. If you don't know what one of them is, we'll very quickly talk about it in a minute. Um, as always, I'll leave all these products that I've got behind me, over there and over there, and a link in the description down below should you be interested. Now for those that don't know, these units consist of a solar charge controller and inverter as one unit. Now I just want to again just clarify that because I do want to assume that everyone knows when they may not know. So solar charge controller and inverter as one unit. Now the advantage of that is we've got less wiring up to do. The, this unit here keeps all the cabling nice and tidy and super simple. Now it is so simple that I'm going to show you, I'm going to connect up three wires and pretty much Bob your uncle and your aunt is done. Now I just want to quickly talk about the batteries that I'm using for this demonstration. Here we have a lithium iron phosphate, a uh, little power wall that I built, it consists of uh, lithium, it's got its BMS in there, it's got frost protection, it's got external 12 volt auxiliary connector. So I'll leave a link for this uh, build if you're interested and to our left we have our lithium, again lithium iron phosphate style battery, a bit like a car battery, it's got a BMS in here which is also Bluetooth so we can kind of dial in and it's contained in this box and it's got its terminal connectors on top. Um, this is a build again, this is a build that I did. Um, I really like this battery and I've mentioned it a few times if you've seen my other videos. Um, it doesn't matter what style of battery we use, we can use a lead style, as, um, I'd recommend something like 150 amps hours, uh, also a deep cycle lead. Don't use like a car battery because that's no good, that's no good. It's to do with the, um, the plating inside the battery. Make sure it's a deep cycle lead or for my favourite personally, I like uh, lithium ion phosphate. Now this all-in-one unit I got from Volticon Solar, and I'll leave a link down below for you guys, but they've got quite a few of these uh, in stock, range from 12 volt, kind of up to 48 volts. Um, just be careful if you do um, buy anywhere else around the world. Very sneakily, you'll often know that it's a PWM solar charge controller inside, not the MPPT. Now, you really want to pay the extra bit of bunts to get the MPPT solar charge controller. Um, I've done video on that previously, the difference between them. But if you can, go for this slightly, slightly more expensive and uh, it'll be a lot more efficient in terms of capturing that sunlight and pumping it into your battery or your lighting, God knows, whatever you're doing. Right, solar fans, I'm gassing. Let's get on with it and get this thing, damn thing wired up. Right, the first thing I'm going to wire up is this mains power cable uh, to our consumer unit. Um, quite often with these inverters, like such as this one here, we can see, it's the same kind of principle, we can see we just connect our three, where depending where you are in the world, we're in the UK, it's a three pin. We connect our three pin straight on the outlet of this inverter. Now, we could do the exact same thing with this inverter. So we could connect our, almost like a, to our extension lead, straight into this inverter, and then kind of straight out to our system. But, remember we're going to wire it into a consumer unit. So I'm going to connect these, this cable here to the back there's two connectors on the back, I'll chuck a photo up. So we're connecting this cable here to the three connectors on the back. Right, let's quickly chuck a photo up. The connectors at the front here, which I'm pointing to my, with my screwdriver, um, that's for an AC input. So kind of you wire this into the grid. That doesn't mean this pushes power out to the grid, so you can earn money, the power only goes in. So we can use this system as a UPS so that stands for uninterrupted uh, power supply. So if your grid power goes down, this thing will then kick over to the batteries automatically and then keep your systems uh, up and running. So we're only going to use the, um, the back ones for now. So what we're going to do next is connecting our battery terminals or cables to the terminals. Now these two are on the front here with the big bars. I'll just quickly chuck a picture up. So what we're going to do, we're just going to bolt these cables with the terminal connectors on already to the system. Right, I very actually, very, very actually, very forgot to say the um, one before you connect these cables up the um, from your battery, make sure your inverter's turned off. Even if this was turned on, if I turn it on now, it still ain't gonna turn on because this power wall has its own separate switch. 
but if you use like a normal battery then obviously it won't. Now I don't know where you are in the rest of the world but um, as you can see the colour coding wires are for the UK so if you're slightly different then just adjust it accordingly. Oh and by the way I do know I've, I've nicked it with the knife that blue cable so if this was permanent in store I'll get that fixed temporary I'm just going to leave it for demonstration purposes. Right what are we going to connect on now? What do you reckon? It's going to be the solar panel. Right I'm just going to kick this solar panel up. Uh, for this demonstration I'm using a 50 watt panel. Now obviously that's going to be too small so uh, what, uh, what I actually use is a 310 watt solar panel uh, for this setup which works fine even throughout the winter. So let's get this wired up and um, for this I've kind of made a connector up and I've bought some of these MC4 connectors uh, and I've kind of bolted them to the end ready to be wired in. Now for this system I've also got an inline fuse. Now this is like an MC4 kind of connector fuse so you can kind of connect on here to your solar panels. Now to do your fuse rating, if you say for example you've got a 10, uh, 10 amp um, solar panel multiply that by 1.5 which gives you 15 now which means you need a 15 amp fuse which is in here. That is not a 10 amp solar panel. So anyway, um, let's connect this up and get this bad boy wired in and that is going to be connected on the front here. I really need to get myself a stool because I keep doing these videos and uh, I keep burning my legs. But anyway, Right, we're all connected up. Now, before we go flicking the battery on your power wall on, we're just going to make sure all our cables are nice and tight. So what we want to, don't want to do is have our cable connecting a terminal only a little bit, pushing amps through there, and it's going to get warm because we're going to get that resistance, kind of, the, you know, the electrons jumping. So once we're happy everything's connected, we're, then, we can, we're good to turn on. So I'm just going to turn my power wall on, and then flick the inverter on. She's fired up. It can take about 15 seconds and then maybe another 15 seconds for the solar panel and then to start working the solar charge controller and then start kicking in. But we're all good. Now, I haven't actually spoken much about this um, consuming unit to my right. Now, I'm not a qualified electrician, but I will say I always recommend wiring one of these things in. I also mentioned earlier about you could just wire this plug socket, for example, to the bottom of this unit like we have here. Do you know what we, these units, these inverters, we just plug our three pin plug socket, wherever you are in the world, whatever plug, straight in. Now the problem with that is, so this is a 1000 watt or 2000 watt inverter, we've actually got no protection. So this plug here, you see I actually broke it, and um, my extension lead have now replaced it, but you can see there there's a bit of a fuse showing. Now if someone was to touch that, uh, family member, dog, cat, goldfish, whatever, or it's cable damaged. This is where this consumer unit tries to save the day. Well, pretty much does. Now, all houses, modern houses, have one of these things. Uh, years ago, we used to just have a bit of fuse wire, but uh, things have moved on. Now, this RCD here is there to kind of monitor that sort of thing. It helps prevent against le electrocution kind of thing. So, what we're going to do is just turn it on. Uh, oh, by the way, before I go on talking, I've left the cover off this um, consumer unit off. Uh, this is for demonstrational purposes only. Uh, this is one I have here. This is what they should look like. This is a different manufacturer, by the way. You should have one of these in your house. Um, it's got cable ports on the sides, on the back, on the front, so we can bring our cables in nicely. So again, I've only left the front off just to demonstrate and show you kind of how everything kind of comes in. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, so what it does is, so if we turn it on, uh, which one is it? That one. So what we're going to do is just mimic on this test button that there's a problem. So someone's just touched a wire. So for example, 10 cars have left, five have come back, and the RCDs realize there's a problem there and then kind of shorten the power. Now on next to it, we've got our MCBs. Now these are a bit like our fuses. They're good for kind of overloading. So if a lot more current is going through than it should, then they flick off. They're good for like short circuiting, kind of that sort of thing. So I've got my light and my plug socket here. So I've got two MCBs. One feeds one and the other feeds the other. So we can isolate one without the other. So 
for example, we've got, oh, I don't know if you can see that, but we have our, the light is on. <laughs> it is on our three pin plug socket. But what we also need to do, we've also got an earthing cable here. Now we need to earth this. Now this is extra protection. Um, and here we have a earthing rod with a clamp that sits on the top. We also, when you buy these a kit, by the way, it comes with a little plastic cover. For the life of me, I don't know what I've done with mine. But that sits on top. And then what we do is we connect our earthing cable uh, to this little clamp. And that, if we've got an earth leakage break, that again is just extra protection. Because if you'll notice, this is metal, this is metal. Most things are metal, and again, it's the extra protection. Um, so if you've got your camper van, it's always a good to earth it. Canal boat, earthy canal boat, you get the gist. Now here's the earthing rod, it's pretty big. Um, I've just noticed earlier that was only showing you a dinky part of it. So make sure you get a copper one as well, so it's good for corrosion and conductivity. Now, with your consumer units, always make sure you get the right size one. When you're ordering your unit from Vorticon Solar, such as this one, always make sure you ask them and select the right one. It's actually a drop-down tab, so as your units get bigger, more wattage, so do your consumer units. And likewise for your cables, always size your cables to the right size of your system. So for example, this is actually a 6mm cable, this is over-engineered for a 6mm cable. I've got a one and a half mil going to my light, and I've got a two and a half to my plug socket, and then I've got 16 mil cable here from a battery to my inverter because my inverter actually pulls a lot of amps. Um, but again, this six mil cable is there for demonstrational purposes. What I'm trying to say is, what normally comes out your inverter is normally larger, and then you then size it to your individual. So, you, for example, if you've got a big off-grid cabin, you could have linking loads of plug sockets. So, again, pick the right size grade of cable. Well, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Helps this little channel grow and fight those YouTube algorithms, which I don't particularly like, and uh, nor do a lot of YouTube creators. But it is what it is. But um, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.